All right, what's going on YouTube? This is Keith with Less Magic More Gathering, and we are getting ready to do a deck tech for you. This one is on a Golgari control deck. Um, I know there's a Golgari mid-range deck. Um, I think I like this one better. So first off, we're going to go over real quick how to upload a deck from Etherhub and import it into um, Arena. So it's very simple. You just go into Etherhub, you find the deck you want, you go to the little um, uh, tab at the top that says Tools, and you hit the Export to MTG Arena. And you click that, and it'll bring up your desk, deck list. You click the button at the bottom, I think it says Import, maybe, and it'll copy that. You go over here to Decks, and you click on the Import button, and it will import the deck for you. If you have all the cards already, it will not have this little triangle with the exclamation point, but I do not have all the cards for this deck. But that's one thing I like about being able to import these decks is you can show them off in this format uh, without having the cards in place already. Now, one thing I would like to see old Wizards of the Coast do uh, hopefully they'll steal this idea from me too, the way they stole my last idea. But that's a... Uh, I'm not salty about that at all. Anyway, uh, I'd like to see them put a format in here, or maybe just a button right here down by the Done button. I know if you've got the wild cards, you can press the Use Wild Cards button here, and it'll fill in those cards that you don't have. Maybe they put another button down here that says Deck Test or Deck Tech or, uh, you know, something like that where you can go into uh, Arena and play your deck that you don't already have all the cards for, but you can test it out, because the problem that I've ran into is, you know, I spunk a bunch of wild cards to put together a deck that I haven't been able to actually test, uh, because it's just a, a brainchild of mine. So I get all the cards, I get use a bunch of wild cards that I can't unuse, and then find out that the deck is terrible. So you don't want to do that when you're building decks. You don't want to have to, uh, you know, go out and buy all the paper cards or, you know, sign up for an MTGO Arena account and pay to rent cards from somebody. You don't want to have to do that. So if they would put a mode in here, you know, they make it very simple. Put a deck test button right here, and you can import a deck, and you can play for no reward against other players that are pay playing for no reward. Um but it just gives you the opportunity to, to use those decks and test them out before you build them, whether it be on Arena or MTGO or in paper. Take that one, Wizards. That's a good, that's a good, that's good advice. Uh, anyway, we're going to jump into the deck tech here. This is Golgari Control, my version of Setch. So we're going to start out here with three copies of Duress. Uh, most of the time, Duress is ran in the sideboard, but I like running it mainboard just because it lets me get into my opponent's hand, see what they've got. Um, it may be something where I never hit. Maybe they're running a very creature-heavy deck, but most decks have some spells in them, whether it's a, you know, Varaska's Contempt or a Sapling, Saproling Migration or, you know, whatever the case may be. Duress usually finds a target, and more importantly, it lets you get into your opponent's hand early in the game and see what they've got. Uh, before you might be getting into any of these other turns where you don't want to take a turn off to do that, but you can you can know what you're up against at the very beginning of the game. Uh, next, we're going to start getting into our removal package. This is very, very heavy on the removal. We've got uh, four copies of Cast Down. This is just going to let us early game handle almost any creature, and, uh, you know, late game it lets us handle, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of creatures you know there are some legendaries that are we're gonna have to worry about with another card but this will handle a lot of stuff and it's cheap two mana no problem we're gonna skip that card there and go straight to the assassin's trophy here usually this ends up being more of a late game play because you try not to uh you know give your opponents that land advantage at the very beginning of the game but sometimes i guess it could be important to get something off the opponent's board really early in the game. But usually you're going to save this for a late game Planeswalker or something like that when your opponent already has the lands that they need. Uh, or maybe you're just wanting to get rid of, uh, you know, uh, 
as Kanta or something like that. So there's there's always targets for Assassin's Trophy. Uh, it's just figuring out when you want to use that to be most advantageous, advantageous for you. Um, next card in the two drop slot, we're running three copies of Dead Man's Chest. I will tell you right up front, in a control matchup where you're not going to run into a lot of creatures, this has to go. It's the first card you sideboard out. But Dead Man's Chest, what it does is you put it on one of your opponent's creatures, and then when it dies, you get to exile cards equal to its power from the top of their library, and then you can cast them for the rest of the game. So you get something like a, let's say, a Tetsamok, because that's in our deck, and I saw it right in front of me, and it triggered me. Or a Steel Leaf Champion is a good one. That's a really good example. Because on, on your turn four, you know, you put a Dead Man's Chest on it, and then you smack it with a cast down. So you're getting five cards off the top of their library that you can then cast and use against them. So sometimes you get a lot of good stuff from Dead Man's Chest, and you can really use that to your advantage. So I like it. You know, we don't do all the normal stuff. And like I said, this is going to be the first card out in a lot of matchups. If you end up against a tokens deck where you're facing an army of 1-1s, one uh, Dead Man's Chest comes out, Ritual of Soot comes in, and you're good to go. Um, next, we've got the three drop slot here with three copies of Murder. Very self-explanatory, instant creature removal spell. Uh, moving on to four drops, we've got four copies of Ravenous Chupacabra. Uh, this has actually turned into kind of an all-star card. I mean, it's really good. Four, four mana, destroys a creature, and gives you a 2-2 two -two body. It's not a huge body for four mana, but it does let you destroy any creature that your opponent has, as long as it's not got hexproof. But we'll get to that in a minute. We might have an answer for that, too. Next, we've got three copies of Price of Fame, um, kind of the opposite of Cast Down. You know, it's cheaper if it does target a Legendary, whereas Cast Down can't target a Legendary. So this gives us a, a good answer for those Legendary creatures. And then it also lets us Surveil, which there's no real benefits to Surveilling in this deck outside of the fact that you get to look at your cards and set up your next couple draws. We've also got three copies of Rask as Contempt for those indestructible creatures and Planeswalkers we might run into. Uh, we got two copies of Vraska Golgari Queen. Check out the alternate art that they gave us for Arena. Thanks, Whizbangs. Um, but Vraska is going to be kind of useless sometimes. You may not have a permanent that you want to sacrifice, so you're just going to plus two her until you can get that ultimate off. Uh, or you can use that as another form of removal if you need to, but most of the time I find myself just plus twoing until I can get the ultimate off, and then hopefully get through with one of these creatures that we do have in the deck, even though there's not a lot of them. So, running two copies of her. We're, we're actually running one copy of Liliana the Necromancer. This is the one from the Planeswalker deck, and the, what's the other one, Untouched by Death? That one is worthless to us. It's wor worthless to most people unless they're running zombies. Uh, that's the only deck that that card works in. But this one does a lot of stuff we want it to be doing. So check it out. On the plus one, you're going to ping your opponent for two life. You're just going to ding them. Just a little bit. Ding. So, And that's important in this deck because it's so heavy on removal that we don't have a lot of stuff that's going to be able to take care of the opponent. So we want to be able to ding them when we can. And when combined with something like you know, Vraska Relic Seeker, when target player's life total becomes one, then you just ping them for two and they're dead. You know, it's got it's got very useful places for that plus, plus one. Uh, the minus one, you can return a creature from your graveyard to your hand. So if you're playing against that control matchup and they've countered your Chupacabra or your Tetsamok or whatever the case may be, then you can return that card to your hand and try again. So it gives you that opportunity. Or maybe you just want to recast that Ravenous Chupacabra uh, so that you can take care of some of your opponent's threats, you know. Um, and the minus seven, this one's really good. Destroy up to two target creatures and put up to two target creatures from graveyards onto the battlefield under your control. Uh, even in your heavy control matchups, they're going to have some creatures, and there's a good chance that you've got a way to kill them, so you're going to kill their creature, and then uh, if you get her to the point where you can use that ultimate, you can destroy more creatures and put more creatures onto the battlefield under your control. So one way you can use this is obviously killing two of your opponent's creatures if that's necessary. Uh, but you could also destroy your Ravenous Chupacabra and then bring it back and destroy one of theirs. So you've got opportunities to 
I don't. Is there a situation where you would want to do that? Is there any situation where that makes sense? Mm, I don't think so. I think the math adds up the same, doesn't it? So if you destroy two of their creatures, and then you can put two onto the battlefield under your control, or you destroy one of their creatures and one of yours and bring back two creatures, one of them is the Chupacabra, so I guess the math is the same. You still get the same number of creatures, but less selection. So don't do that. Sounded good at the time, though, right? Um, yeah. There we go. So we're running one copy of Liliana the Necromancer. Not a lot of people using this card either, but I think there's a I think there's a chance it could become more popular. Um, we're also going to run two copies of Vraska Relic Seeker. I think everybody knows what that one does. It works really well with the other cards here, with the other Planeswalkers, um, based on the ultimate and the creating a pirate creature token. So you're going to be able to get some creatures out there if you need them. But you can also just use those to sacrifice to gain a life and draw a card for the uh, Golgari Queen version of Vraska. So lots of good options and a good way to finish the game. <clears throat> Uh, next, we've got our Carnage Tyrant. Two copies of Carnage Tyrant. This is just going to a lot of times finish the game for us, too. These last couple cards here are just kind of game enders. Nice thing about Carnage Tyrant is it works really well in that control matchup. Uh, I recommend putting a couple more in the sideboard so that when you're up against control, you can uh, add in more Carnage Tyrants. Maybe in, maybe even put in the uh, Vine Mare since it can't be countered either. Um, or can it be countered? Can you counter Vine Mare? Now I have to look, otherwise I'm going to feel stupid. Vine Mare. No, oh, you can counter it, but it's hexproof. I'm glad we got that out of the way. Okay. So, anyway, Carnage Tyrant can't be countered. Really good against control. Uh, once it's on the field, they can't uh, target it. Then you've got to go for some kind of board wipe, which I know the uh, Jeskai control is running the... What's the card? Destroy all. Not that one. Oh, we gotta go white. We're looking for white. Cleansing Nova. They're running Cleansing Nova, so it can get rid of the Carnage Tyrant. Uh, but hopefully, you can find a way to bring it back. So, that's an option. And then we've got two copies of Tetsamok Primal Death. This, I know a lot of people aren't using this card. Um, I have really good luck with it, especially in a build like this where you're just kind of keeping the board clear and you might need to take out one or two extra creatures when this comes into play but then they're gone and you're just ready to start banging in damage so i put a couple copies in there uh our mana base is pretty basic we got nine copies of the swamps five copies of the forest for overgrown tomb for woodland cemetery and the only real different like you don't see this a lot and i don't really know why i think you probably will as the meta continues to build itself into place here especially for things like your carnage tyrants your uh, null hide ferox the vine mare detection tower running three copies of detection tower you can pay one and it makes it so that your opponents and all their creatures that they have hex that have hex proof can be the targets of spells and, and abilities uh, so it's going to let you get through to kill these carnage tyrants if you don't have a detection tower, things like the Carnage Tyrant, Vine Mare, they're going to be a pain for this deck because we don't have any board wipes. So I definitely recommend keeping this in the main. If you don't need it, you don't need it. You've got your other colored mana here, and we never really have any issues getting that colored mana we need, so uh, it doesn't hurt to have. Uh, some things that you definitely want to put in the sideboard are going to be your Ritual of Soot, which is going to get rid of help you deal with all the token decks and you know things like the uh the selesnia tokens and your saprolings and things like that <clears throat> uh another card that i don't think a lot of people are looking at but has suddenly from in my opinion gotten a lot better is phyrexian scriptures uh especially in a deck like this where we don't have a lot of creatures you can play this, put a 1-1 one, one counter on up to one target creature. Obviously, you want that to be one of yours. It becomes an artifact into it in addition to its other types. And then on the second chapter, you destroy all non-artifact creatures. So things like your Gear Hulks and the other artifact creatures that came out of the Kaladesh block are gone. So this has a ton of good targets. 
And then the third chapter exiles all cards from all opponents' graveyards. So when you get up against that Golgari, uh, you know, reanimator deck, things like that, or your, uh, what's the overgrowth? Undergrowth? Undergrowth. That's the one. Any kind of undergrowth deck, this is going to wipe those out. They're not going to, I mean, they're just going to have nothing to do then. Uh, so I would definitely recommend some Phyrexian scriptures in the sideboard. Um, and then I also, I already talked about the, the you know, the hexproof creatures for when you're going up against control. Uh, things like Dead Man's Chest come right out of the deck when you're up against control because they won't have any good targets. So it's easy to replace Dead Man's Chest and, you know, cast down with something that may work better against your control matchups like your extra duress and any other kind of hand disruption. So it's very easy to make this deck work against almost any appoint, opponent if you're doing a best of three. It's kind of set up right now uh, as a best of one deck, uh, but it's easy to sideboard those things and change that depending on what your meta is like. You know what you play against and what to expect when you go to FNM or whatever the case may be. So just make those changes in advance, but then keep in mind the sideboard. Uh, so this deck's a ton of fun if you like to piss your friends off, uh, spend a lot of money, because this is not a cheap deck. Uh, it's also fun if you like to watch things die. You might want to get some help for that. Uh, so hopefully this is a good base for you. Let me know where you go with it, changes you make and things like that. And I guess we'll see you next time. That's all I got for now. I told you about how to move things from Ether Hub to MTG Arena. I told you about my fantastic idea for putting a deck test mode in the... Uh, MTG Arena here so we can test our decks before we've got all the wild cards we need. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Hope you enjoy the deck. Hope you use the deck. If you do, let us know how it works for you. We'll see you next time. Deuces. Hey, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, go down below and find that subscribe button. Press it and the notification bell so that you'll know when we post new videos. If you've got some feedback, follow that arrow to the comment section and let us know what you think. See you next time.